Hey everyone, I'm right in the middle of my digital caliper roundup. I've got seven different digital calipers here and I'm putting them through their paces trying to see which one is the most accurate and precise while being the best value for the dollar. And something interesting came up in the data gathering and it's something I might not have noticed if I hadn't been doing raw data gathering between all of the digital calipers. And what I noticed is that uh, on these cheaper ones like the Nyko the Carrera, the Capri, Harbor Freight, uh, all those. Um, while they do perform just barely within tolerance on the external measuring faces here in between the jaws, when you get up here to the internal measuring faces, I was seeing a uh, variance of anywhere from one to three thousandths of an inch. And that's a, that's a pretty significant uh, difference. That's gonna throw your measurements off quite a bit. Uh, so I started looking at ways I could demonstrate uh, that variance and uh, what I was seeing. So what I came up with is I just got my smallest feeler gauge here. I've got a, a four thousandths. Uh, keep in mind that the variance I was seeing is anywhere from one to three thousandths. So it's not going to fit in there completely. But this is the smallest feeler gauge I have on me right at the moment. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to take the feeler gauge and I'm going to slide it right in between the two jaws. Like so. And then we're going to look for the point at which it looks like it's starting to deflect. So, you know, right in there. That's like maybe, what, 10, 15 degrees? So that means uh, that the space in between there is actually damn near close to four thousands. And the, the Capri is the one I've actually had the biggest problem getting to zero out every single time. So I'm going to show you on the cheaper ones and then I'm going to show you on the Mitotoyo and the eye gauging. So Anywhere from like 10 to 15 degrees in there, it looks like it's starting to deflect. Okay, now let's take a, an eye gauging. This is basically eye gauging's version of the Mitotoyo. Really good digital caliper all around, and uh, it's actually a really good value for the dollar. And I'll take my feeler gauge right in there. And see where it starts to deflect on a good one. So it's, it's almost right away. Looking at like 40, right around 40 degrees there, maybe 30, anywhere from uh, 35 to 45 degrees. So that means there's a lot less slop and slack in between the internal measuring jaws there. And just to show you on the control here, the Mitotoyo, it's basically at the same point. So anywhere from 30. 35 to 45 degrees there. So there is little to no space in there. And what, what you're looking for here is that when these jaws are zeroed out here, these jaws should be exactly zeroed out also. There should be no space in there, no matter how small. You want this zero point to match that zero point because as soon as you start moving it, it's measuring your internal width there. So zero sh at, the, at the zero point should be zero on uh, both faces. Uh, another way to demonstrate that that I figured out is I'm going to bring a soft light into the picture here. Camera up. And uh, what we've got here is a eye gauging on the top, which is a pretty good entry level digital caliper, and a Nyko on the bottom. Nyko gets a uh, you know, fairly decent reviews on Amazon and the internet. Um, it is one of the cheaper ones you can buy. Um, and the same thing on this one, I got, you know, within tolerance measurements on the external measuring faces, but when it comes to the internal measuring faces, that's where you see the variance. I've got them clamped in between two, one, two, three blocks there. So they're both on the same plane. And then what we're gonna do is uh, come up here and I'm gonna hold, uh, hold them parallel with the the plane of the camera and see if we can see any any light in there. 
So right about there is parallel with the camera. Make sure they're both zeroed out here. They're both at zero. Alright. So, come in closer here. So, that's about parallel with the plane of the camera. You can see space there and no space on the top. Space there, no space on the top. Kind of hard to hold it at parallel. All right, that's parallel there. So you see a space there, no space there. See if we can get them both at the same time. And we are parallel there. All right. So now you can see there is a. Noticeable gap on the bottom, no gap on the top. That's about as close to parallel as I can get right there. So if I come out here and come at an angle, then you can see a big gap there, and you start to see the gap on the top. So that's that's at an angle, and uh, that's right in there is about parallel. So that's the best way I can demonstrate it visually. Um, if you want to test your digital caliper, get yourself a set of uh, feeler gauges in the you know one to three thousandths range. But I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, so the ones that don't have that uh, that bug that I found so far, the eye gauging entry level product. This is their Easy Cal eye gauging digital caliper. It's right on. And it actually has very little slop um, for the price. That is a really good digital caliper. Um, the Nyko, pretty highly rated for being uh, cheap and um, you know somewhat accurate. Um, this one does have the space as demonstrated. The Carrera, same thing. It's got the variance at the top there. The Capri, same thing. Variance at the top. The eye gauging. Absolute Origin or Origin Cal digital caliper. Uh, it is right on par with the Mitutoyo in terms of slop and overall variance. In fact, uh, they come out like damn near the same on the measurements. And uh, that's about it. So um, I would recommend an eye gauging or a Mitutoyo based on the internal measuring jaws on this test. Be sure to check out all the other videos in the Digital Caliper Roundup series.